What's going on guys? In today's video, we will be playing VGC. If you guys have watched my channel before, you will know this isn't the first VGC video. In fact, it's the most informative. Now for the actual video idea for this. The third global challenge was coming out soon and I needed a team that fit for the best of one closed team sheet format so I can have a chance to get championship points. If you place well in these global challenges, there's a chance you can get championship points that you can use for the world championships. I knew I wasn't going to go to worlds but it'd be fun to flex about getting placement points for an event like this. But what team did I want to use for this? Well, for starters, I really wanted to use Annihilate, as Rage Fist most of the time is a win button. Of course, we had to add Mousehold to this team to redirect attacks and beat up Annihilate. I train Annihilate in defense till it hits like Palafin and Wave Crash well and giving it the speed to speed creep other Annihilate. I give it the Fire Terror type to resist fairy moves and to be immune to Will O Wisp. Mousehold has the defense to lift a Sacred Sword from Chien Pao, as well as giving it safety goals to be safe from redirecting Spore and Sleep Powder. I give it the Ghost Terror type to be immune to Fake Out and Fighting Moves. I put Fluttermane as a third because it's fucking Fluttermane and giving it the Focus Sass so that it doesn't die instantly. Instead of Dazzling Gleam, I give it Taunt to stop Spore and Trick Room from going up. Terror Fairy in case I want to hit harder. Fourth would be Iron Bundle, my magnum opus of this team. I would give it a Steel Terror type with Terror Blast to surprise Fluttermane. Remember, this is closed team sheet, so your opponent doesn't know what moves you have. So essentially, any random asshole can win you a game. I would put Arcanine as a fifth with its usual move set and a Grass Terror type to be immune to Powder moves. Can you see that this team hates Among Us? I train it to be specially defensive and to live a Hydro Pump from Iron Bundle. For alas, I decided on Xian Pao, as a Sucker Punch really pressures opponents. I give it an Adamant Nature holding a Life Orb, as it's basically a glass cannon for this team. I give it the Dark Terror type to not have the defensive ice typing, and so that Sucker Punch can hit even harder. I also have Haze, mainly for shutting down Don Dozer and Taxi Gary. And like that, the team is complete. But the challenge wasn't until a few days, and I hadn't assembled the team yet in game, so I would practice on Pokemon Showdown. Pokemon Showdown is everything competitive Pokemon, so I would play 20 games on the VGC ladder to see how this team performed. I played VGC 20 times on the Pokemon Showdown VGC ladder, and this is what happened. Game 1 happened as well as it did. Safety goggles clutched. Despite the lack of attack EVs, a plus one Rage Fist with 250 base power always KOs Amoongas, and that it did. Not without getting hit by Fisher though. With Annihilate gone, this game just got a whole lot more difficult. I terrestrialized Iron Bundle to do good damage to Fluttermane and to try to resist the incoming Heavy Slam. But of course, I would be dead by a ground move the very next turn. After losing Mousehold, I knew there was nothing I could do, and I lose the very first game. If Annihilate didn't get hit by Fisher, I could have easily won there. I let the same Pokemon, cause why not? I do the early Terrasalization on Mousehold so I can boost Rage Fist. In VGC, even Terrasalizing into a type can gain you momentum in a match. Even though this dude makes his Rock Crab into a real one, I take that crab out, but not before I lose Mousehold. Fluttermane comes out, and because of the parting shot, it lives. Iron Bundle is my key to beat Palafin, so I try to make sure that it stays healthy for it. He switched back into Flutter, and I get a lucky freeze. With Palafin left on red health, Arcanine is able to extreme speed and win me the game. This game, we witnessed a Trick Room team with Skill Swap Galay getting flash fire, so my Wisp is useless. For some godforsaken reason, I terrestrialized Fluttermane instead of Annihilate and I essentially wasted my Terra. But that's okay, we'll get over to this one quickly, and I still have it in the back. I switched to Xi'an Pao knowing Trick Room was going to end soon. But he terrestrializes into a Grass type and I Ice Spinner as he thought I was going for a Dark move, but Sucker Punch can't be used under Psychic Terrain since it's a priority move. 
I'm able to take out Ndidi and Trick Room goes up once again. This time I'm able to sucker punch and do good damage before getting taken out. Arcanine is able to extreme speed and eventually win me the game. Game 4, Mousehold enters the field and then it dies. I consume that's choice spec so I take it out next turn and do good damage on Palafin with Moonblast. Amoongus comes out in Rage Powder since this dude wants Palafin to take out Annihilate but is unable to. I taunt on Amoongus to prevent Protect and any support moves from it. Because Pollen Puff is technically an attacking move, it's able to restore its partner's HP so we just double up on it and Amoongus can't really do anything and we win this game. I'm fighting a dude called Villain Valiant using Iron Valiant and he leads Arcanine which gives me that defiant boost. I Terrasalize to resist fairy moves and Arcanine goes for hell. Valiant is able to knock out Mousehold and Fluttermane comes out. They also had the same idea of resisting a fighting move and so Moonblast doesn't do as much and I get hit hard by close combat. Because I'm Sash, I'm able to live a Shadow Sneak and taunt the Amoongus. Arcanine comes in and because of the attack drop from Intimidate, close combat does the less and Valiant goes down. With Chi Yu left versus Arcanine and Fluttermane, I'm able to win the game. Game 6 I fight a dude with Wo Qian. I did the fatal mistake of terrestrializing into a steel type while a fire type came in and Wo Qian had substitute which made it even more problematic. I'm able to chip the Arcanine but I really should have doubled the Wo Qian the very next turn. Fluttermane comes out and I target it knowing Wo Qian will protect and I chip Fluttermane to red. Arcanine comes back out but I'm able to haze the stat drops. After a while, he's down to his last two Pokemon and Wo Qian has weak seeded both of my Pokemon. I switch into Arc since Sun is up and I double up on the Torkoal so Hydro Pump is in range, even under the Sun. I take Torka out but Sub Protect Leech is just too overwhelming and I lose the game. I guess this really is a live Wo Qian reaction. This game I'm facing a team with two Defiant users. Mousehold once again dies for no reason and it reveals his own Mousehold has Encore. So I switch to Fluttermane while terrestrializing Bundle. He really doesn't want Fluttermane to die so he spams follow me so his own Mousehold dies. I get the double protect on Fluttermane and I'm able to keep both Pokemon safe. He protects his own Fluttermane and most likely he's going to take out the bundle since it's more threatening of the two, but he takes out Fluttermane for some reason. I send out Ape as he switches into King Gamut and Wild charges the Ape, thinking I would do protect but no, I just want that Fluttermane gone. Both of his Pokemon go out and Fluttermane is his last. I know Terra Blast won't kill from this range but that's okay, Annihilate can take the Dazzling Gleam from Terra Fairy so we win this game. Game 8, I fight a team I see way too often. I don't want Ape to get hit by Fisher, so I bulk up and try to rage fist my way through this team. But instead, Mousehold gets Fissured. I use Chien Pao to try to take out Amoongus, but ends up sweeping both of my Pokemon due to Spore. Unfortunately, I am unlucky with Sweep Turns and Amoongus has Clear Smog, so there goes my stat buffs. With Bundle, I am able to freeze Amoongus and take out Baxcalibur. But because I am terrestrialized, I am neutral to Palafin Wave Crash and I lose the game from there. Game 9 would be the game that ends in 2 turns. Game 10 would start out well as I outplay my opponent 2 turns in a row, with the second turn ending up in me terrestrializing and taking out Uncle Dango. Mousehold would end up tanking attacks from the opposing mouse ape and I take out their own mousehold. This person was bold enough to bring an Intimidate Mon into a Defiant Mon, and so Arcanine takes out Mousehold by take out Arcanine right after. Fluttermane and Annihilate are able to take out the opposing Annihilate and we win the game. This game out and I'm finding another Trick Room team. I would forget Hatterene has Magic Bounce and Trick Room and I'm going up anyway. For whatever reason I didn't Thrasalize Ape which would have been much better into this team in general if I did. However I'm able to bring in Fluttermane somewhat safely and stall at Trick Room. Fluttermane takes out Hatterene but gets packed by Hariyama. This time, I'm the one to be bold enough to bring an Intimidate Mon into a Defiant one. I Wisp King Gamut making it a lot less threatening and I'm just barely able to lift Terra Blast. Both Arcanine and Annihilate are able to take out Hariyama and King Gamut and Zarina isn't able to take out both of them, so we win the game. This team starts out with Scarf Chiyu spamming Lava Plume. I Terrasalize to take advantage of Beads of Ruin but I wasn't able to take the dog out. 
Father Main takes out Chiyu, but got burned prior, which isn't optimal. I'm able to burn the Dragonite, but the Dosswin ends up having Wish, which is bad. I E-speed into my Ape slot, thinking Rage Fist would be boosted, but had to be vulnerable damage. Eventually, Chien Pao comes in, and Arcanine goes down. Because I'm at plus one in attack and defense, I'm able to hit Xi'an Pao super effectively with Drain Punch and get the healing and be immune to body press. We shouldn't win this game, right? Nope. Game 13, I literally, literally lose to a guy who didn't bring a full team. This game is way too embarrassing to show at its full capacity. But all I'm going to say is, I thought Bundle out sped. In this game, one second you're terrestrializing, the next second you forfeit. In game 15, this dude leads off with double dragons, while I'll lead off with the nice type. He would terrestrialize and not have the quad weakness to ice, but I just protect a scout while Willis on the warring moon. This is why I found out Leer was a multi-target move, but quite the mistake to use it against the Defiant Mon. I leave Garchomp on 7% health while taking out warring moon. I however switch when I see Talonflame. Bundle and Flutter take out Orthrum and Talonflame respectively. There's nothing a Garchomp with 7% health can do, so we win the game. This game would have an interesting start as we both start with standard leads, but I would protect the mousehold just to chip the Torkoal so Eruption could be weaker. He switches into Palfin under the sun, but this was when I would start spamming Follow Me as I refused for a Pokemon to get put to sleep. Eventually, Sun would go back up and he would bring Arcanine for whatever reason and give me a Defiant boost. I knew he saw Annihilate as the bigger threat, so when Torkoal came back out, I would protect the ape knowing he would sleep powder into that slot and would taunt the little again. After that, he kind of just quit. This game would have a unique lead from me for annoyance as I double the Amoongus so that it can't really do anything. I double into the Pelipper but it didn't have Sash so it does die to a freeze dry and what's interesting is that Clear Smog doesn't clear the booster energy stat boost which is very interesting. He would then switch out Amoongus for Palafin which I had to make the double switch which baited out Sucker Punch but I would take massive damage from Jet Punch. But with Rain gone, Arcanine would be able to handle Xian Pao more easily. He switches Xian Pao for a Moongus, and then we would later trade Pokemon. At some point in the game, I would make the aggressive play of bringing out my own Xian Pao and East being Palafin, but he protects, but he later forfeits. Game 18 would prove to me the most intense game of this video. I had nothing to lose, and so I beat up the ape, but Rage Fist doesn't kill, but Pelipper had an jet pack and sends Palafin back in. I would follow me, but Palafin would one-shot the mousehold and Drain Punch doesn't knock out King Gambit. Bundle was my win condition for this game, and so I would unfortunately let Ape down here, and it was two to four. My opponent would bring Pelipper back in the setup brain once again, while I protect Bundle to bait King Gambit into taking it out. I still had one thing up my sweep though, and that was terrestrialization. I would terrestrialize into a steel type to resist freeze dry and ease beat the Pelipper to even up the odds. I protect Iron Bundle as Palafin jet punches into that slop and I would chip it down with e speed. However, I was blessed with this game as Hydro Pump missed and so I e speed the Palafin and Hydro Pump misses again and so I win the game. I was in a perfect position game 19 and as Fluttermane terrestrialized, I still had no need to terrestrialize myself since I always lived Dazzling Queen. And because I had picked Follow Me, Rage Fist wasn't powerful enough. What's worse is that I wasted my Terra thing and Palafin with Jet Punch, but it didn't. Luckily, I'm able to take out Fluttermane and then Palafin at the very next turn. But Tinglu would take out Shan Pao, and at the end of the day, I was asleep and I would lose the game. The final game of these 20 games. This will be for all the marbles. Let's give it our very best Cheyenne. It's already over. GG. Well, that's it. The games are over, but let's go over some statistics. Across these 20 games, I would win 14 of them, equating to a 70% win rate, and I probably could have won more if I hadn't gotten extremely unlucky, and or just used my common sense. 
As for the Axel Global Challenge, this team partook in out of the 45 games I played, I'd win 29 of them, equating to about a 64% win rate. And I would have placed 1406, which was in the 1024 threshold I was aiming for to get the five championship points. However, Japanese players aren't counted towards people eligible for CP, so my placement for TPCI regions would be 425. I moved up 1,000 places, giving me 10 championship points. I had a real blast making this video, and if you want to use the team for yourself, here's the rental code. If you want to use this team on Showdown, the PokePace link will be in the description. One last thing I should tell you is that you should definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'm down to do a similar video like this for other formats. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.